Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. All right, today we're going to start talking about division. And every time, see, this happens every year. I'm psycho, I mean psychic. I can tell that when we get to the point of division, I say, all right, class, we're going to start some division. I get a lot of, ugh. I don't get that. That's all made up. Okay, all I get is, ugh. And it really kind of excites me. Because how, how many of y'all have a dog? Okay. Let me ask, let me, okay, Brooklyn, you like to talk. Brooklyn, you have a dog, right? Yeah. Does your dog like to eat? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you like pat yourself on the back when you say, you know, my dog yesterday only ate one bowl of food. Today I got to eat a bowl and a half. I mean, is that, is that pretty impressive on your fault? On your? No. No? No, 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 no. Uh-uh. No. I mean, getting somebody to do something they like is really pretty easy, right? I mean, if, if my boss said, all right, Mr. McMurdo, I'm going to teach you how to take a nap. I mean, that's not really, that's not really something that she should get like a raise for teaching me how to sleep because I got that down. I've got that down. So teaching somebody... Teaching somebody or something that they like, that's easy. Teaching them something they're good at, that's easy. I mean, I've, I've seen some of y'all on your cell phones. I mean, if I had a lesson that said, all right, Mr. McMurdo, you need to teach your students how to type two times faster. On their, okay? I, that's nothing. That's, I don't have to do anything. I'll just say practice and do it. And you do it, right? But the majority of fifth graders hate division because they think it's hard. But today, today in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I'm going to prove to you division is not difficult. I'm going to prove to you that division may take a little bit more work but if you're willing to do the work, you're going to get it done correctly. So when you get an assignment, we get an assignment back, and I get a phone call, and uh, Mr. McMurdo, yes, um, I'm looking at my baby girl's test, and she got a 62. Now, usually I can say, well, you know, she probably just didn't understand it, and we'll go over it again and work with it. But by the time I'm done today, there'll be, e there'll be only one answer. Either, man, they did great on it, or... Nope, she was being lazy. I promise you, because I can teach you how to do this. I can teach you how to do it like this. When we're dividing in fifth grade, okay, give me a four-digit number. Um, 6,248. 6, when we're doing fifth grade, we're required to know five-digit dividends. Dividends the number, or four-digit dividends. Dividends a number on the inside of the house. If we're still in elementary school. <laughs> Since we're not, we're going to call it the dividend. Okay? We, then we also have to know two-digit divisors. So, Heaven, mm -hmm. give me a two-digit number, please. Oh, he's not using 52? 52. 52. All right. Now, Bailey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. If I were to make multiplication facts of just one through nine, and I did my 52s out, and I mixed them up, and I, 52 times 5, could you solve it like, like that? No. You could? 52 times 5. Oh, no. No, uh-uh. I don't have my 52s memorized. Yeah, no. I don't have my 52s memorized. Anybody in here have their 52s memorized? No. You, you, have, you have all them memorized up to 16? Yeah. Okay. But knowing as... As my young friends over here, we said that that division and multiplication are inverse operations. They're inverted. They're inverse operations. Knowing one helps us with the other, right? So if I told you in order to do very well at, at division, all you have to do is know your first nine multiples of 52, and you can do this problem very easily. 
This is where the work comes in. Now, I could give you, see this, back in the olden days, when the teachers had chalkboards. You know what a chalkboard is, right? Yes. Okay, we would get like 25 of these or 40 of these, sometimes 50, and they'd say just do the even or the odd, usually because the odd were answers were at the back of the book, so they'd make us do the even. Jerks. <laughs> it's so much easier if they let us do the ones where they have the answers on. Okay, being as cool as I am, I'm thinking why, 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 why would I have you do 40 of them? When I could have you do 8 to 10. But when I have you do those 8 to 10, I want 8 to 10 correct, right? Because the problem with that is, is if I did 50 problems, each problem is worth 2 points. So if I miss one, not a big deal. But if I do 8 problems and miss one, I'm missing like 12.5% for each one. So, because there are more to miss, so each one's worth fewer points. So this is where it's going to take a little bit of time. But if you know your multiples of your divisor, divisors are over on the other side. If you know your multiples of your divisor, then that's the hardest part of the division. Okay, so 52 times 2 should be what? Will? 104. See what Will just did? He didn't do it thinking out loud, but what he did is he just did 50 plus 50 and then added 4 more to it. That's what Will did. Now he's going to add 50 to this and then add 2 more to it. And what did you get, Will? Um, 100, 156. See? Look at that. And if we go through and we list our first nine multiples of 52, then the rest of this problem is just easy. All right, so who can do me 52 times 4 would be what, 208? Yeah? Yeah, yes. 52 times 5 is 260? Yes. 52 times 6. Oh my gosh. Three. Two. Two. Three. Two. Three. Three. One. Two. Three. Twelve. Three. Twelve. That's right. Three. Twelve. Fifty-two times seven. Three. Sixty-four. Fifty-two times eight. Uh, four, I mean 416. 416? Yeah, four, I'm trusting y'all because I'm I've been doing math all day now. My brain's tired. Four, 52 times 9. 468. 468. Four, 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 okay. Four, six, now if I know these, the rest of this is easy. So if I give you the problem. See, I wrote this down, and I saw Bailey's eyes were like, what? <laughs> 6,248 divided by 52, what? Weren't there, am I right? Yes. You looked at that and thought. But if I gave you this information, does it make your life a lot easier? Yeah. Okay, so ba Bailey, she texted me. It was on my phone. And she wants to help me with this problem. So Bailey, let me ask you a couple questions before we get started. Bailey, is 52 going to go into 6? No. No. It's not, I am not going to have a four-digit quotient. Bailey, is 52 going to go into 62? Yes. Yes. Which means I'm going to have a hundreds, a tens, and a ones. A hundreds, a tens, and a ones. So now that I've done this, now that I've done this over here, Bailey's got all of her thinking has been done before she's had to do anything here, and all she had to do was multiply by one-digit numbers, which we've already proven in this last couple of weeks that we're all good at. Okay, so now I'm looking for 62 here, Bailey. Okay, because I'm not going to take it. I don't need to know how many times 52 goes into 6,248. I don't have to do it all at once. It's like my pappy always said, Bailey, how do you eat an elephant? 
<laughs> one bite at a time. How do you solve a problem like this? One step at a time. So now I'm going to look at my multiples, Bailey, and I want to find my multiple of 52 that is closest to 62 without going over. This is just like um, the price is right. Yeah. Um, the, first, the first one, 52 times 52. 1. 52. So 52 times 1. So it's only going to go in there one time. Because if, if, I, if I went in twice, I'd be at 104, and 104 is too big for me to put in there. Okay, so 52 times 1 is 52. Now this is where... It gets tricky there, Bailey. 62 subtract 52. Um, it is it's 10. 10. See, you know what else I like there? Is Bailey didn't make me do the borrowing. <laughs> Bailey didn't make me do any borrowing. And I mean, 62 subtract 52. It's just 10. We don't have to cross off and go each step. That's just, it is what it is. So after we subtract, then we bring down here, Bailey. Um, now, Bailey, I'm going to go back to my list of multiples. And I'm playing the prices right again. I want to get as close to 104 as I can get without going over. So you can actually do 52 times 2 to get that same answer. Oh my gosh. 52 times 2 gives me exactly 104. And Bailey, keep your, wait, keep your shoes on. But I want to know 104 subtract 104. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, zero. And then I bring down the eight. <laughs> then what happens, Bailey? Um, you're going to subtract it from zero again. Tell me again here. You're going to subtract it from zero again. I'm going to subtract it from zero. No, like, it's hard to explain. It is hard to explain. I know what you want me to I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Pretend that you're talking to Mr. Magbuhat. I know. Just pretend that there's a teacher here named Mr. Magbuhat who you have to speak really clearly to. Otherwise, I mean, one day, you know, he's the, he's the type, you've all, you've all met these kids, the type of kids you say, go put your shoes on, and the kid will put them in their head, you know. You're like, no. Well, you didn't tell me how to put it on. Okay. That's Mr. Magbuhat. So you got to be very specific. We got to be very specific. I have to have a number in my ones place, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna put the eight, and then you're gonna minus it. No, you're gonna put the eight. Under, the eight, and then put a zero under, it and then you're gonna minus it, and then you're gonna become like, um, a zero. Okay, but what do I? What am I gonna put here? All the eight. No, because fifty-two times eight is four hundred sixteen. It would be a zero. It would be a zero. And then it would be zero, and I'd subtract, and I'd have eight, and I have nothing else to bring down, so that would give me my remainder of eight. I know that's what you said, but we're pretending like we're talking to Mr. Magbahat, the kid who, if you don't tell him specifically what to do, is going to put the shoe on his head. Yeah. I'll put a shoe on. That's what Mr. Magbahat does. Yeah. Why do we call him Mr. We show respect, okay? Well, it's not people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I All right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Matthew, Matthew hates to get problems wrong. Matthew hates to get. Matthew, we said. Matthew, we said that. Division is the inverse of what? Thank you, Matthews. All over the room, we're full of Matthews. Of multiplication. So if I wanted to check this, my young friend Matthew, if I wanted to check this, I could take my quotient, multiply that together, and I would get 6,240. But then I'd add my remainder, and I'd get 6,248. So you'd multiply your quotient and your divisor, and then add your remainder in, and that's going to give you your dividend. Oh, yeah, Miss Mercer taught us this. 
Miss Mercer knows everything. But this is the step right here that proves to you, everyone listening, everyone paying attention, all the people around the world, that division is not hard if you just prepare yourself. It's like making spaghetti. Division, division is like making spaghetti. You cannot. You cannot just dump the noodles into the water without getting the water ready. Yeah, water has to be boiling. This is our. We're boiling the water right here. We're getting it ready to make our spaghetti. If we don't do this, then your fork's not going to work on the spaghetti because it's just going to. I'm just saying. Let's. Jonas! Two digit number. 99. Jacob J, four digit number. All right, so in a moment, in a moment, when you're going to work at your desk, with the dry erase board or scratch paper or something with somebody sitting near you in a moment not yet in a moment not yet in a moment not yet the first thing you're going to do to solve this problem is we're going to get our water boiling which means we're going to list our first nine multiples of 99 which really Jonas is pretty easy because I can just add a hundred and subtract one like 99 times 1 is obviously 99. 99 times 2, I just add another 100. So it'd be 199, subtract 1 would be 198. Just add 100, subtract 1 for each one down. So much more here. I'm going to pause you now for station identification. Mariah, 99 times 3. Shh, I can't hear Mariah. 99 times 3. Good. 297. Because if you add 100 to 198, it's 298. Then you subtract the one because you're only adding 99. 99 times 4 is Alyssa. Three hundred ninety six. Awesome. Ninety nine times five. Camille. That's what I said, too. Ninety nine times five. Yeah, please. What have you got? What have you, I, I gave you ten minutes. Oh, no, I thought I did. So the opposite Oh, okay. 99 times 5. 5, the opposite of way. Go. Okay, let me stop. Come here, look. What's 396 plus 100? But I don't want to add a whole 100. I only want to add 99. So it'd be 495. 99 times 6. Ari. 99 times 6. 594. 99 times 7. Noah. That's what I said too.
Noah, what's 594 plus 100? 694, but I don't want to add a whole 100. I only want to add 99. So it'd be 693. SCN, 999 times 8. 792. 99 times 9, Bailey. Eight hundred ninety-one. Very good. Very good. Man, you are smarter than the average bear. My bear. Oh. Brady. Brady is ninety-nine. Going to go into five. Fifty-five. Five hundred fifty-five. Brady. Yes. Yes. Which means I'm going to have a two-digit answer. I'm going to have a number in the tens place. And a number in the ones place. A number in the tens place. And a number in the ones place. So Brady, I got 99. I've got my first nine multiples of 99. Which one is as close as I can get to 555 without going over? Uh, 495. 495. So that would be 99 times 5, which you just told me was 495. What? Well, 99 won't go into 5. It won't go into 55. So now we have to do some subtracting here. So, what is that, 60? Yeah? Is that right? No, no, no. It's 40. It's 40. It's 60. It's 60. Oh, no, yeah. Now I bring down my ones place. Brady. Now I look at my multiples of 99, which is the one I can get closest to 605 without going over is? Uh, 99 times 6. 99 times 6, which is 594, which makes it 11. This is our boiling the water so we don't have to eat crispy spaghetti. Boil the water before you uh, make your spaghetti. Otherwise, you're just. You're eating like crunchy. Yes, and then spaghetti pieces are flying out of your mouth left and right. Your mom's like, I did not raise you to eat that way. I'm just saying, that's. What's going to happen? All right, questions. Boom, shakalaka, peace out. God bless, love ya. Peace out,